Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Chance. We appreciate you joining us. You caught us in a place we've never been before, Jumbo Reservoir. We're in northeast Colorado. Uh, we're just a few miles from Nebraska, actually, and uh, we're fishing for multi-species today. Could be walleyes, that's what we're starting on. Could be crappies as well. We might catch some smallmouth bass. We might even catch some carp on jigs. So what we're gonna do is kind of take what the lake will give us, which we do on a lot of episodes of Fishful Thinker. We don't know much about the lake. It's the first of June. Uh, water's very high as you can see, so we're gonna come see what we can learn, how fast we can figure it out. So stay tuned, get comfortable, it should be fun. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. <laughs> um, okay, thought I had a weed. You got a little tiny crappie. Little tiny goat minnow for a little tiny crappie. <laughs> Didn't even know he was on there, that's bad. And he swallowed my thing. I wonder if that's what all the ones that marked on the graph, they might end up being that. And you know, we've seen a bunch of fish along here on the graph and I wasn't sure what they were. So the right answer is to put something out that'll always get bit, which is pretty much always a gold minnow and sure enough, right away. So maybe they're all crappie, but that's okay. Hopefully we'll find some bigger ones. Little tiny crappies, there we go. We've been seeing a bunch of these guys on the graph and uh, and I'm getting bit, lots and lots of bites. And you can see the walleye guys trolling back and forth behind us. So far we hadn't contacted the walleyes. The bottom bouncers are catching lots of little baby walleyes. But, uh, but we've, been, we've been throwing more jerk baits and, uh, and crank baits, you know, that flicker shad there, trying to see if we can come up with a bigger walleye than what these guys are catching. So uh, at any rate, beautiful little crappies. We keep finding those on the graph. They gotta be 10 inches long to keep here. And uh, not that we'd be keeping them anyway, but there is a bunch of them in here. We've already seen a bunch of them. And since we don't know much about the lake, uh, you know, there's not a lot of point in, uh, in going looking too much at the crappies until we see what's gonna happen with the walleyes. But if we keep catching those, we're gonna go look for more of them. We do, after all, preach to fish for what's biting. Okay, in the spirit of honesty, we here at Fishful Thinker would like to apologize. We put the boat in the water without thinking straight. I had the dreaded banana in the boat. Camera guy says now I must eat it and then suffer through the rest of the day. It's the worst luck a fisherman can have. I've been fishing for 20 minutes and haven't caught anything and now we know why. Ay, 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 ay. I'll choke the thing down. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. All right, we're on our second spot, guys. We fished for maybe 20 minutes to a half hour on our first spot that we picked. We just picked a major main lake point. Uh, truthfully, we picked a little bit because uh, a couple people we talked to in the parking lot had mentioned it, and second of all, it just looked good to us. So we put the two together, we started there. It did not pan out very well, except for a couple of crappies. Um, we feel like if we want to catch crappies, we can go focus on them some other way rather than just hunt and peck a few of them on that point. So now we're on a dam face right here, a dike face, and uh, it's got plenty of water. It's five feet deep on the base of the rock, so we're going to see if we can catch somebody here. Given that we know that there's walleyes and smallmouth bass in here, this seems like a good possibility for catching a few of them. And so we'll work our way down to where the wind's blowing in and see what it will produce. Uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Supposedly, there's very few smallmouth in this lake, and we were hoping to do multi-species. Now, again, we've never been here, so we don't have any idea what we're really getting into. There's very little information. The closest thing to a map I could find was literally a blue ink blob, uh, slightly out of round. Uh, there's not much information about this particular lake, and one of the things that they did, we did figure out, is that there was a bunch of uh, smallmouth in here back in the day, but they had a major winter kill and uh, drawdown and drought and this, that, and the other, and. Uh, and so the population was decimated. Well, there's a little tiny one, so we'll be quick to put him back. All right, found us a snake swimming across the lake. We wanna see what kind it is. I think it's a bull snake just from here looking at him, but it might be a rattlesnake. We'll see here. We get up closer to him. Look at this thing, guys. What a beautiful snake. It's a big old bull snake. What a beautiful snake this thing is right here, guys. 
That's a bull snake. He's harmless. He looks mean. He'll probably try to climb in our boat, but that snake is absolutely harmless. In fact, he's a good guy to have in your environment. And uh, we'll let him go about his business like we do all the snakes. All right, we're gonna sight see about sight fishing some carp here. We can see him up on the sand. Oh, he turned, he looked. Oh no, I hooked him on the tail. Okay, it came off. <laughs> I had him right in the tip of the tail. <laughs> I didn't want to pull on it because I didn't want to be stuck to that fish for the next 30 minutes. But I uh, had him hooked on the tail. So we're looking on this sand right here and you can see the sand and we're just going to look along here. And when we see one up cruising in the shallow water, then I can throw to him and see if we can get him to bite. All right, I just sight fished this carp, guys. He comes cruising by front of the boat and I threw a gulp minnow in front of him and he ate it. Look at the minnow stuck in his nose. Are you kidding me? Ah, uh, <laughs> sight fishing carp. We told you we're opportunity fishing. It'd be, you know, it's funny as we talk about carp being a good game fish, and he was just cruising in front of me, and I threw this minnow in front of him, a little three inch goat minnow as we were working down this dam, and he freaking choked it. So now we got a big old carp hooked up, and it's going to get interesting before, uh, before we get this thing in. I've got him on six pound, 100% fluorocarbon right here. And I threw the minnow in front of him about five feet and you could see him turn and head straight down. I'm like, oh geez, he followed it. And sure enough, he got it. <laughs> and we've been talking in the past about how, how carp are way underrated as far as the game fish goes and sight fishing for him is an absolute blast. And, and that's a six foot 10 medium light, extra fast action rod, St. Croix Legend Extreme. We've seen that's my standard gulp minnow set up. This rod almost never has anything besides a gulp minnow on it. All right, ay, ay, ay. I should have had more Wheaties this morning, guys. Holy smokes. He got a perfect bite on it and uh, right in the tip of the snout. So we'll throw that out and uh, get him by his gill flap here. Don't hurt him, not in the gills themselves. And <laughs> big old fat carp right there, guys. So we're gonna get this guy put back, but sight fishing for carp, I mean, how can you beat that? Big old bugle mouth, they call them. And uh, that's a pretty neat fish. Here you go, buddy. Okay, guys, we're gonna sneak back in. And what we're doing is we're just looking for him. And if you can see, the camera's got a good polarizer on it, but it's nowhere near as good as the polarizer on my Costas. Here's a couple of them cruising right here. You can see what we're looking at. There's one carp and two shad cruising together right there together. The carp's spooking going back. All we're doing is looking for those carp that appear to be feeding, that are cruising along, that appear to be feeding, and then pitch the jig in front of them real sneaky. And, uh, and that seems to be uh, the best deal. There he goes. Oh, buddy, that's why you go sight fishing for carp. I don't know. That's not a good sign. Out we go again. I have a feeling it's another big one. I got a good look at him as he turned down. But, uh, oh, geez, it's another big one. That is good fun. Look at him go, bulldogging. Come on back here, dude. Oh, man, they're so strong. <laughs> this is only the third one I've, or fourth one that I've cast to, and two of them have eaten so far, so that's a real good sign. That's a fun way to catch fish, too. Around the boat we go. That's the second lap around the boat. Here you go. Come on up here, buddy. Come on up here. Look at a bend in that little Legend Extreme. Whoop, 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 right around there. Whoop, got him, all right. Whew, that's number two, guys. And that's two, I think, out of four, maybe five that I've cast to, and uh, I managed to hook two of them. They would come up and eat that little gulp minnow. So what a deal. I mean, there are people pick on carp and all that, but pick on them all you want. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Okay, third spot, taking a quick break from sight fishing for carp. We found some riprap on the bottom of this concrete dam here. Not a ton of water depth on it, but enough that we feel like it might hold either walleyes or smallmouth. 
I don't think the Wah is going to be in a very good mood in the first place. It's glass calm, it's high bright sun, um, it almost feels like a dog days of summer kind of day. You can see there's a little bit of an algae bloom, there's no wind, we have a full moon, night four last. If the walleyes don't want to play, then we can sight fish for carp, or we can go dab crappies in the trees, or we can potentially go catch some smallmouth on some riprap. So we just go fish to the condition. Got him. There we go. Got that one. I don't know what we got, but we smoked him on the crystal clear water. And look at this little tiny walleye. <laughs> There you have it guys, so now we're up to four species of fish. Uh, people joke because we're always throwing chrome jerk baits and oh geez, why do you do that? Well, because we're in the West United States and it's sunny a lot of the time. And today's a classic example of very high bright sun. He's got all three hooks of this little chrome bait right there. And it is literally like 1.30 in the afternoon on a June day. The whole key is to just get these fish to jump up and blast it out of a pure um, reaction, excitement, whatever you want to call it. I mean, we've talked about it on a jillion different episodes of Fishful Thinker. You make a bait that's real fast and real erratic and you'll get somebody's attention with it every time. And boom, oh, I had that when I saw him hit it. <laughs> and one of the keys to the whole thing is I've got a very shallow running jerk bait and the boat's in nine feet of water. The reason my bait runs so shallow is because I want to draw the fish up to the bait. I'm not trying to take the bait down to the fish. What I want to do is take the fish to my bait. So by having the drawing power of a chrome jerk bait, I can draw fish up from deep water to my bait. And what did we catch this time? Now we caught a smallmouth. And uh, there's no shocker. Smallmouth on a jerk bait is no shocker. Uh, here on Fishful Thinker, we've done a lot of that, and he's a little bit bigger than the last one. Look at all the rocks right here. There he goes, boom! I just watched that one come and eat it. <laughs> that little smallmouth came up underneath it, and he looked at it, and he looked at it, and he looked at it, and I jerked it, and he smoked it. <laughs> That's mean. That's a mean and dirty trick, huh, Mr. Smallmouth? He's like, that is not even right. Come on up here, buddy. I got him ballyhooed, too. Uh, While well, you can see, he, he sipped the tail hook, and then I end up getting him all over the place. But the key, as we've talked about in a jillion shows, is the, the key is in the pop and the pause. It's not a pull bait. It's not a drag bait. It's not a reel it in bait. It's a jerk bait. You got to pop on the bait, make it burp, burp, and just turn sideways in the water column. That's all we want it to do. We don't want it to move forward. We're not trying to get it out of an area. We're trying to make it look like it's struggling for all it's worth. And you can watch the bait just, it, I don't want to ever do the same thing twice. I want it to just literally barely look alive. So that's all I'm doing with it. And it just rattles around. It's not moving. I'm not doing this with it. I don't want to do that. I don't want it to swim. I want it to do that. That's what I want it to do. And you do that around game fish, you're gonna catch some of them, I promise. <laughs> now, no, I'm noticing that some of the rocks on the foot of the dam are running out uh, as we get farther down it. And I've never been here, I would like to point out real quick, that's the same as most shows we do. Um, we don't know anything about the lake. So we do that on purpose because I enjoy going and figuring it out. And, and I feel like that that's one of my favorite things to do is to go figure out, okay, don't know much about it, let's go see what we can catch. And uh, as opposed to going some place that I know and I know the patterns and I know the good spots and all that, it's just invigorating for me to go try something like this. So we do a lot of it. We fish a lot of dams. We fish a lot of boat ramps. We fish a lot of main lake and secondary points. We fish a high number of channels. We fish, uh, we fish swim beach areas a lot. We'll fish um, uh, any sort of dike or windbreak or tire barriers, we fish those things a lot. Again, they're all multi-species things that we like to do. Incidentally, right where we keep seeing these smallies right here in this one little section also happens to be where we've seen the most walleye along here. So, there, there we go. Oh, have, oh he's little. <laughs> Poor guy. I just saw my line pull straight. <laughs> Come up here, buddy. <laughs> Now we're gonna find a big one. It's funny because Parks and Wildlife says there's not very many of these in here, even though they've put a lot of them in here over the years, but I'm told there are some big ones in here. So that one's not quite a big one. He hadn't been in here for very long yet.
Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Predominantly what's stocked in here is, well, there's one right there, is walleyes. Now for a lake that don't have very many smallies, we found the smolly trick, I can tell you that. <laughs> See if he's gonna bring anybody with him. And you see, he got the easy, buddy. Come on up here, come on up here. Yeah, for a lake that doesn't have very many of them, we found them, that's for sure. No doubt about that. And he got both hooks on that bait. Easy, buddy, we'll be letting you go real gently. Another beautiful one, his face is a little beat up. Looks like he's played before, somebody else caught him. See you, buddy. And you can play with them. No different than those carp up on the flats we were catching a few minutes ago. If you're, uh, if you're up on the flat part of the bank and you can see carp and cast to them, that's fun. If you can see smallies that are, that are hunting your jerk bait down, you can work the bait and get them to bite it, that's fun. I love to be interactive with the fish. And, uh, and jerk baits are one of the ways to do that because typically you're in a clear water environment. There we go, got that one. Yeah, we can put some numbers on the board with this one, that's for sure. <laughs> and we just gotta find us a giant now. Come on up here, buddy. And it's hooked on the side of the face there. He got all excited about it. He got himself on the side of the face. And that happens so often with smallmouth. This one's got a hook, let me, look at this. Let me get that out of there. This one's got a hook right here. He got somebody broke off once before. I will not pull that out of there. We'll let him continue to work on that on his own. Uh, just because of the direction it was in there. So, yeah, we've uh, we figured out a way to rack up numbers really quick. And typical of any Fishful Thinker episode, that's what we always want to go do. And we've done it. On the flicker shad. There we go, guys. We wanted to mix it up like we talked about back and forth. I got the jig out. And to be honest with you, they just didn't want to bite it. And that's really not a huge shocker. With a jig, it's hard to generate urgency for the fish unless you're really snap jigging it. And so I got out the little flicker shad bait, a number five flicker shad, and we'll bring him on up here. And a perfect little small mouth right there, and he's right on the corner of the mouth, It'd be no worse for the wear, but that little perch colored, beautiful fish. It's a little Pro Series perch colored number five flicker shad right there, and I got it on, on a straight eight pound, trying 100% fluorocarbon XL, and a six foot, I think it's nine, six nine medium light, extra fast, St. Croix Avid X rod, and then the little Revo reel. We were told there was no largemouth in here, and that's a very small uh, largemouth, so don't know what the deal is with that, but uh, according to the official creel surveys, they're not in here. Uh, no one told that one, <laughs> so we'll see about that. It's funny because we've seen some cover that looked really good for largemouth, and we haven't fished any of it because there aren't supposedly largemouth in here, but uh, it makes me wonder if there aren't more. Walter right here, oh buddy, here we go. All right, we came to one more spot, guys. And uh, actually, we're gonna take our chances with him because we're gonna drop him right back anyway. And he ain't any bigger than any other ones, guys. He's not any bigger than any others, but we came to one more spot to fish another little section of rock. I got the little flicker shot out right there and, uh, and started throwing it again. We've been bit on that earlier today as well. It's perch color, it goes real good with, in this water color. And, uh, and there you have it, there's another little baby walleye. Uh, there's fish, there we go. There's a decent one there, I'll nose out a little bit. The one good thing is by downsizing the little flicker shad and the, and the, little, the little rod and it's on six pound, 100% fluorocarbon, it makes even these little smallies like this of which there seems to be a jillion of in here. I just was fixing to spit out, look at that thing. He choked my lipless crankbait in the wind. I just literally was spitting out. I cannot believe this thing has not been bit. I've only thrown it for five minutes, but it's a perfect condition for it. And look at the size of this crappie I just caught. Let me get him unhooked here. I'll give myself some slack here. And we'll get him off and get him put back because that's a beautiful crappie and we don't want to hurt him any. Uh, if we were in a position to be eating fish, this one would be a tasty one right here, but we are not. All right, there we go. I had to wrestle with that one. But uh, anyway, we'll get him put back. The lipless crankbait, the breeze finally came up. It's another giant smallmouth, but that's okay. <laughs> because it, the, with the amount of bugs we're enduring to catch these guys, uh, that's okay. And it's kind of funny because we just fished all the way across this dam with no bites at all. And then we get to this corner where the wind's blowing in and get one bite. And he might not be a giant, guys, but 
with the way our afternoon's gone, we're happy to see him at this point. And you know, we're, our, our show is always about being honest. We, we always want to be honest with our audience about how our day is or isn't because, beautiful little smiley, because that's the way fishing really is. So, you know, as the host of the show, sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow when you don't have a great day on the lake, but we've never been here, didn't know much about it. We did catch carp, uh, crappie, smallmouth, and walleye, so we had a good day in that regard. We struggled with size, but that's okay. I think if we came back in better conditions, we'd do better. Uh, we talked to a whole bunch of trollers today as well, uh, a whole bunch of trollers. They were catching fish one after the other after the other, and the vast majority of them were 12 to 14 inch walleye. So um, I think generally we hit the lake on a bit of an off day, and sometimes that's going to be the situation. But we sight fished for some carp. We had a great time doing that, got some big pulls on our strings, caught several of them and had a good time with it. And of course, the, the smallmouth were very cooperative, even though there are really not supposed to be very many of them in here. So. We made the best of what we could. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something. Hopefully you appreciate our uh, humbleness and being willingness to put this on there. Some days you win, some days you don't. If you try these techniques, I promise you a lot of the times they will work, even if they weren't real super successful here today. But we did catch a bunch of fish, had a good time. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter if you want to join the conversation. Hopefully you'll tune in and see what we're up to next week, and hopefully we'll have a little bit more success. Maybe we'll even catch a giant. So we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you then. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Berkeley. He comes cruising by front of the boat and I threw a goat minnow in front of him and he ate it. Look at the minnow stuck in his nose. It's funny as we talk about carp being a good game fish and he was just cruising in front of me and I threw this minnow in front of him, a little three inch goat minnow as we were working down this dam and he freaking choked it. And that's a six foot 10 medium light, extra fast action rod, St. Croix Legend Extreme. <laughs> All right. He got a perfect bite on it and uh, right in the tip of the snout so we'll throw that out and uh, get him by his gill flap here don't hurt him not in the gills themselves and Berkeley catch more fish oh there's one he's on it he's on it oh he got oh he's bumped it like five times burk, burk, burk. oh man oh. <laughs> If anyone's watching this, we need a bug spray sponsor and we need it yesterday. <laughs> All right, we need to cut for a second. Cut. You can cut. Cut. 